So if suppose I give you a reactant like this now from ketone we can produce this that means one of the hydrogen of the ketone can be replaced by chlorine now th this this is a reaction that we will study when we will study the reaction of ketone but now we are studying the method of preparation of ketone we will learn how to get this how to how to replace a hydrogen by chlorine but suppose i am giving you already that this is a reactant on this reactant I add, I add KCN, I get A and then I am adding H plus H2O on this A, I am getting B, I hate that B, I get, I get, I get C and CO2 gas is evolved. I tell you, identify A, B and C. So how you will go about solving this problem first of all solve this problem and then uh, listen to the discussion now this heat i will see and i will remember I'll, I'll i'll try and hunt each and every reaction of organic chemistry i'll i have studied up till now that in which reaction on heat is the only reagent and uh, and then i'll scan all the reactions i'll have in my mind i'll search that beta keto acid beta keto acid decarboxylation because in this group remember carboxylic acid was removed off so that carboxylic acid group is removed off so this is decarboxylation so beta keto acid decarboxylation is the reaction that uses heat as the, only heat as the reagent so this must be a beta keto acid and that's why co2 gas is being evolved that's a hint this heat and the co2 is the hint for you that's how they will give you an exam so this b I'm getting a gut feeling that B must be a beta keto acid. Now, if B is beta keto acid, let's first identify A. What can be A? What, what can happen when KCN is added to the substrate? Now, KCN is a, I mean, cyanide ion is a nucleophile. What can obviously happen is this cyanide ion will replace this chlorine ion because HCN is a weak acid than HCl. This tells us that cyanide ion is less stable than Cl minus. The less stable thing will get in and more stable thing will come out. So this cyanide ion will replace or will substitute this chlorine. So in A, what we expect is this chlorine must come out and this cyanide ion must get in. So this is what we expect A to be and this is a beta keto acid from speculation. Now what's happening this H plus ion and H2O this is a reagent for hydrolysis. This is a general reagent for hydrolysis of ester, of ether, of alkyl halide, of cyanide. Now this reaction from A to B is something that we are going to study in the chapter carboxylic acid. This is a standard reaction very common very famous. Now what happened when we hydrolyze cyanide then the cyanide turns into carboxylic acid. Like in Stefan's reaction we saw that when imide we hydrolyze this this turns into an aldehyde. If you remember Stefan's reaction in the method of preparation of aldehyde. Similarly when cyanide when there is a triple bond cyanide is hydrolyzed that gets converted into carboxylic acid and that's what we have speculated that this must be a beta keto acid. That, so that acid group would be generated from this cyanide. So it, I mean, you can work it out, but when you study the chapter carboxylic acid, this will be a cakewalk for you because you know this reaction because this is a standard reaction. But for now, using your intellect and using the reaction that we have studied before, you can identify that this is a beta keto acid. So I can see keto, I can't see acid. So this cyanide must give me acid. So this cyanide gives you indeed a acid. So B is actually this cyanide will be converted into carboxylic acid. So you will have something like this. Cyanide getting converted to acid. So now you have a beta keto acid. Now you heat it. Now this part 
will go into CO2 as it has been shown here and this hydrogen will just come on the CH2. So what C is, C is this, C is acetone, that's it, C is the acetone, salt, easy, good. Reaction number four. Reaction number four uh, would be what it would be. Let's see. Let's study this reaction. Pina coal. Pina cologne. Rearrangement. Pinacol, pinacolone rearrangement. Now, what happens in this reaction is we start with the aldehyde or we start with a ketone. We can start with any of them. Let's start with the aldehyde. Let's start with ethanol. When we add magnesium in a proper solvent like ether, we get vicinal diol. like this. Now this vicinal diol is called pinacol. So write it clearly. This is vicinal diol. Vicinal means in vicinity. Vicinity means surrounding. Vicinal means in surrounding. When we have two groups adjacent to each other on a carbon adjacent, we call it vicinal. If we have two halogen, it is vicinal dihalide. If you have two OH group, it is called vicinal diol, alcoholic group, all. This is vicinal diol. So this is called pinacol, pinacol, pinacol. So this is vicinal diol and this is pinacol. So, from the spinacol, when we when we do hydrolysis of the spinacol, water comes out, and uh, then we get pinacolone, and that pinacolone is a uh, ketone. But let's see how first the spinacol is formed. We have studied this reaction before, and we studied some of the reactions of of what of when we when we studied uh, started to study a reaction intermediate like carbocation, carb anion and free radical. So when we when we had the first introduction of free radical, then I taught you this reaction, but I'll, I'll quickly tell you again how this reaction occurs. Magnesium loses electron. Magnesium forms divalent ion and two electrons are released. Now those two electrons has to be filled somewhere. This electronic density can't go on increasing and these electrons just can't go on building up in the system. So magnesium being an active metal will lose electron and that electron has to be gained by someone and that someone could be bonding orbital or anti-bonding orbital. Now there is no empty bonding orbital because there is no plus charge in the system. This has to be gained by anti-bonding orbital. Now if you look at this carbon, this oxygen has del negative charge, this carbon has del positive charge. So, this carbon is electron deficient and this carbon is the one that is the contender to accept this electron, pair of electron. So, this electron goes into the anti-bonding because bonding orbitals are filled. So, this electron goes to anti-bonding of this carbon. So, if that carbon has to accept electron, suppose the first electron comes in, so this, if this carbon is accepting electron, it has to lose one electron because the octet of this carbon is complete. So if it is, act, it is having a charge deficiency, a partial charge density of del plus. But when this electron comes, it comes and brings a charge of minus one, not del minus. So if it is accepting a charge of minus one, it has to have a deficiency of plus one. 
but there is no deficiency of plus 1, there is a deficiency of del plus. To generate deficiency of plus 1, a bond has to be broken by this carbon. So this carbon will break a bond. So if this bond goes, goes, goes into the, if the electron of this bond goes into the orbital of oxygen, this electron can come in here. Right? When that happens, we get this. If an electron approach this carbon, then oxygen will have a negative charge because the electron of this bond is going into the oxygen and carbon will, if, if, if we break this bond, then carbon will have a plus charge. When one electron comes in, it will have a, become a free radical from a plus charge. When another electron comes in, then this will be from a free radical turn into a carb anion. So it will develop a minus one unit of charge. Right? So when this carbon gains two electron, it develops a minus one unit of charge. When this carbon generate, gains only one unit of electron, then that is in the form of free radical. Now there can be any intermediate, depending upon the availability of electron, depending upon the availability of this magnesium chip, magnesium atom, there can be either a free radical or there can be either a anionic form of this carbon. The final product will be the same in both the cases. We'll see how.